Tony, you know, you kind of talked about the cloud a little bit in terms of, you know, the strategy of how cloud impacts the innovation that we're trying to bring into this industry. You know, as Optus, you know, you know, you've been one of the forerunners in terms of adopting multi-cloud capabilities. So how do you see this whole cloud native architecture enabling advanced 5G network functions like core, like dynamic slicing, or low latency services? And what are really the key qualities? Um, you know, could it be interoperability, security, scalability, that are you are prioritizing to really accelerate this journey forward? Thanks, Raghav, uh, and thanks for having me. I've just moved up from Sydney today to Helsinki, and I'm really pleased to be up here with you guys. As you said, I've been in the industry a long time, actually over 30 years now. So, And I started off on the equipment manufacturing side with um, Nortel Networks, which is now partially uh, absorbed into, into Nokia in various That's guises. Right. And, uh, and then the last uh, number of years with uh, Vodafone New Zealand and uh, One New Zealand, which is uh, a New Zealand operator, and now most recently uh, Optus in Australia. And I guess over those multi-generations, I've seen um, things move from technology-specific um, guises through to customer centricity. And as an industry, more and more, it's um, becoming a lifeline service. So as far as that's concerned, I think customers, number one these days, are expecting reliability. And when I say reliability, it's cyber security, it's connectivity where they want it, it's bandwidth and services that they expect tailored for their particular environment. So reliability would be number one. And some of your examples are answered and answer the reliability um, question. Then they move on to customer experience and that's about tailored use cases for the particular environment they're in, be it IoT at one extreme through to, through to gaming or enterprise private 5G. There are different user experiences and customer expectations. And then the final category I, I, I've sort of anchor myself on is cost efficiency. So making sure that every year we're providing a more efficient, more highly utilized uh, capability so that our customers get the best value for service or best value for money. So out of all of those technologies you've listed, I think the first and foremost is ubiquitous coverage, the capability to connect with a quality of service that is needed for the particular application they're running. So ubiquity of coverage, whatever the access technology is, sure. I would consider to be number one. Once you've got that sort of table stakes, adding on AI I think is going to be the game changer for us as an industry because AI will allow you to further optimize, further tailor. You take the network capabilities, you marry that to the customer use cases, you marry that to what you're seeing from a holistic point of view. So I think AI is going to absolutely revolutionize what is today's basic table stakes offering. If you put that into the cloud, I think the cloud is actually amorphous. It can come from the edge through to the core. It can be private, it can be public. Everything started in the last few years to be virtualized and now it's moving to cloud native. I think that would be the other biggest thing above table stakes, which is connectivity as required ubiquitously. Yeah. No, thank you, Tony. I think, uh, so it's just not trying to tackle one thing, but you know, a multitude of things that have to come together, which is on the network side, on the artificial intelligence side, in terms of the offerings and customizations. So very, very insightful. You, you know, you kind of touched on this uh, thing about the cloud journey, you know, and, you know, Optus has been a leader in multi-cloud adoption, you know. How do you see things like cloud native architectures enabling, you know, this new journey into 5G and, and things like core in terms of dynamic slicing, you know, kind of trying to build low latency services. What do you think are the key qualities here? Again, I mean, you, you talked about some of this, but it, is it interoperability, scalability, security? And, and how do you prioritize these things in the journey ahead? It's a really good question, actually. I think number one in this day and age is security. We have to provide a secure, I call it the secure, scalable, elastic pipe. You know, if it can be 
secure, that's what every customer is requiring these days is the knowledge that you have security of service, security of coverage, and the capability. And I think AI is going to add a new dimension to both security of the product, but also cyber security, which is a part of that. Um, cloud evolution for me, um, I, I've been through the generations of, you know, um, uh, thin pipe, fat client, uh, other way around, fat pipe, <laughs> thin client, you name it. So it's evolved. And a lot of it's actually been enabled by the telecommunications industry as we've had more and more scalable bandwidth, lower latency. You've been able to move more and more of the workload into the cloud. And the cloud sure. gives you infinite scalability, um, virtual infinite scalability, when you need burst capacity, when you need diversity, failover, all of that can be delivered by a true native cloud environment. Very good, very good. Uh, I think w one of the interesting challenges that we face in the industry, uh, Tony, is that you know, you've got to kind of balance on one side the innovation that you bring in. Uh, and on the other side, you've got to drive the efficiency of the network as well. So, you know, this is something that obviously the cloud brings all these automation capabilities, which is why we move to the cloud and one of the reasons. So, you know, can you give me a sense for how important automation is? I know that we are working with you on this journey, you know, very much so. Uh, but I'd love to hear, you know, how do you think, you know, what do you think about automation? How do you see the collaboration of how we're working together to find this right balance between innovation and making sure that there's efficiency in the network? Yeah, I think all telcos, um, which the hyperscalers don't at this stage have as a problem, is we have an inherent legacy of technology. And most telcos around the world are simplifying plans, sim re reducing legacy dependency on old copper-based services. Right. Once that cleansing is completed, getting our data and our inventory straight is going to be super critical. Um, I have not seen a telco yet that has a really great asset and inventory management system. If we can use AI to automate some of that, that would yeah. be great. So I get you get the table stakes sorted out, and then there's a whole pile of basic automation that needs to go on top. I'll use a, a, an example, um, a very simple example. There's a lot more natural catastrophes occurring around the world with global sure, warming. Sure. And the minute you have a cell site impacted because of a natural catastrophe, it's not really the cell site going down, it's how you use the automation to up tilt the antennas, doing overlap coverage, automatically deploying generators because nine times out of ten it's the electricity that's gone off, not the, the actual telco infrastructure. How do you automate all of that and turn it into a notification to a customer that says, hey, sorry about what's happened, this is what we're doing about it, because that's what they're interested in. Absolutely. There's a natural catastrophe and how can they contact loved ones? Yeah. So using it for those sort of outcomes, I think is going to be huge. Yeah, yeah. And how do you see the collaboration between you know, us here at Nokia and you know, all the work that we do with you? And we're very, very proud to be, you know, and privileged to be you know, your, having you as a customer. Uh, but any insights as to how do you see that collaboration going, your experience, so on and so forth? How has that partnership been? So I'm actually up here at the moment working on our five-year strategic roadmap. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've, we've gone from a 3G switch off to a 4G to a 5G. What comes next? What comes next is cloud native, yeah. total automation, AI, all of these sorts of things leading to the 6G world. That roadmap... I'm working on with your team. I'm working with your teams in radio, transport, core, automation. How does it all come together? And it's not a technology roadmap for Nokia or for Optus. It's a customer roadmap to the future. Right, right. No, that's very interesting. I know that we're engaged with you on these fronts. And, uh, and I think here is where together we have to work on the same side of the table to really address this, you know, future state architecture of what we want to drive together. So, you know, we, we find that really, really exciting. And, and thank you for coming across here to share that with us as well. So it, the, w one of the things that we have touched upon is AI. And, you know, this is a topic that comes up again and again. Are you seeing some very natural use cases, you know, kind of in, in this journey that has become, you know, relatively obvious that Obviously, we have to embrace it and adopt it, but 
A any insights more that you could share in terms of very specific use cases that you're looking at that could be, you know, have a material impact on how you build the network? So uh, there's, a, there's several angles. One is uh, cost efficiency, so making sure that we are far more efficient in the way we operate our network, getting utilization cents per bit at a really good optimal level is going to need AI. Examples include power efficiency. So we spend a significant chunk of money, as do most telcos, on electricity. Can we optimise electricity consumption to the demands of the day or this particular special events? Uh, can we also use that to enhance our green footprint for um, greenhouse gases? All of that is possible with AI. So I see this sort of bucket of cost efficiency and cost management for the network as a big use case for AI. Then the other basket is customer-centric, tailored experiences and using AI to actually work out what you as a customer are wanting to do on the network, be it an enterprise customer, a government client, a consumer, um, a, a device, IoT. We can tailor the network based on time of day, particular instances, using AI to have a really high quality bespoke service for customers. Well, thank you. I, I think, uh, you know, undoubtedly, this uh, embracing AI responsibly, obviously, uh, is going to be a, you know, pretty much of a game changer. And, and we're excited working with you on some of these areas as well. So, you know, as you look forward to this, uh, you know, journey ahead, your, you know, next state architecture, um, what do you see are the critical kind of milestones or areas that you feel that you've got to kind of, as not only you hit, but as an industry that we need to collaborate to kind of achieve these things, to make sure that we move the architecture with the right innovation, you know, to bring different types of value added services. Yeah. Uh, probably a bit controversially, I'm, I'm sort of a network as a platform sort of person. So okay. exposing APIs and making the network more accessible as a, as a platform. You're right. Um, so you've got your, your branded products, but there's some bespoke use cases where having the network APIs exposed, it's certainly going to make it easier for AI to, to sort of be used as well. So And linking it to the ecosystem of correct. applications and yeah. so on and so yeah. forth. So you're seeing some of that with some of the um, Kamara and other APIs, but network as a service APIs, TMF Forum's been working on that for a number of years. So how do all of these APIs create network as a platform? Very good, very good. Tony, you know, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. It always is, you know, I, I learn a lot every time I talk to you. So, you know, thank you very, very much for f sharing the insights. You know, we at Nokia are truly honored and privileged to be a partner with you and Optus. And, and we really look forward to the journey ahead. So thank you so much for sharing that and being here in Helsinki with us. So thank you. Thank you, Raga, for having me. Um, as I said, the 5G roadmap and strategy is a joint effort. It's a symbiosis between the two companies. I've been a partner of Nokia for a good number of years now, and I know your team's going to really step up to the mark and help us with this five-year vision for our customers. Thank you. Thank you.